More often than not, when I have to replace a 6 liter engine, it's because of a catastrophic failure. About 95% of the time, this is avoidable. And I'm going to show you how to avoid this. But first, I want to show you what a true catastrophic failure is and how there's a cascade of events. Initially, the engine is run hot, and then the head gaskets start to fail, and then the head gaskets fail, and then there becomes a, a, a series of things that happen when you push this engine with blown head gaskets. That's why it's real important to diagnose the blown head gasket as early as possible and so that you can fix it and move on. Over here on the engine stand, I have an engine that's torn down uh, after a catastrophic failure. We're going to go through and take a look at what happens to these engines when they fail. Initially, what happened to this engine was is that it got overheated and the head gasket failed on the passenger side of the engine. When we went back over here on the driver's side of the engine, the head gasket was pretty strained, but it still hadn't blown all the way. So all of the carnage that I'm about to show you that happened to this engine happened just from one head gasket being fully blown. Now, what happens when the head gasket blows is that the compression inside the piston goes into the water jackets. And conversely, once the engine shut off, you get water into one of the, or more of the pistons and it will cause a hydrolock situation. Now this particular engine was pushed and then what happens is, is that it gets real hot and it will blow the oil cooler. And the water from the oil cooler will go down into the oil pan. So now you're pushing oil that's contaminated with water through the engine. As the engine gets hotter and hotter, the EGR cooler will tear up and then you will push water out of the tailpipe. And then as the engine gets really hot, it will start to melt down inside the oil filter. Now one of the things that happens when you get to this point, it creates a stink inside the engine that uh, is it, just astounding. I mean, this engine has been sitting inside the shop since last Thursday and it's Monday morning now. And the, when I walk into this shop, the stink it was all the way out by my office by the front door. It's just terrible. You, you can't get away from it. It's just horrible. After you start to melt down up here by the oil filter and the oil filter housing and whatnot, it sends shrapnel down into the oil pan. And then this shrapnel that's down here in the oil pan ends up in the oil pickup. Now I've rotated the engine a little bit so you can see what it looks like on the bottom. And then it goes into the oil pickup, which then clogs, which means that no coolant gets into the bearings inside the block and it just burns the damn engine up. The engine is screwed, okay? The heads are probably cracked at this point, unusable. If they're not cracked, then they're warped to a point where you, you can't remachine them. The block is toast because the bores are all eaten up with all the scraping and the rust of all the metal particles that are going in, on inside there. But I'm quite sure that the crank is smoked too. Not to mention your fuel injectors and your coolers and everything else. I mean, this engine is screwed. This situation was entirely avoidable, okay? It started out with running high EGTs which went into a, a slightly blown head gasket which got worse and worse and worse and then they pushed the damn thing until it became so bad that it just literally smoked the engine this is what happens when one of these engines smokes it's a cascading effect due to the ignorance of the driver not paying attention to his gauges and not keeping the coolant up if you're constantly having to add coolant to your engine there's, it's escaping somewhere it's either going out of the tailpipe or it's being pushed back out of the coolant bottle if you get a cracked coolant bottle or you're constantly pushing coolant out of that radiator cap, it's time to pull the engine and do the head gaskets and put some studs in this sucker. The fact is, is that this is avoidable, but you have to recognize what's happening before it becomes catastrophic. Because this engine here came out of a 170,000 mile track and I had to charge them. I also had to charge them for the core because there's nothing left. I mean, I can't rebuild this. What the hell am I going to do with this thing? A little bit of vigilance can save you a lot of money on these trucks, and keeping an eye on the coolant is an extremely important thing.